here we are back with uh, part three, and uh, we'll continue with that. Get rid of our music. And we're going to continue talking about a shift in the demand curve. This time our demand curve is going to shift to the left, and that will mean that there will be less demanded at every price. And some reasons for that to happen. One would be that there were fewer consumers. For example, if the United States was our complete market for coffee beans, and California were suddenly to pass a law that said that uh, you know nobody can drink coffee anymore, uh, then that would significantly reduce the amount of demand for coffee, and there would be less demanded at every price. Yeah. Uh, if there was a significant decrease in income for the consumers, let's say, for instance, the current recession has put a significant number of people out of work, and of course if uh, people are not working anymore they're, they're not going to buy nearly as many things and we will find that demand is less at every price okay? now there may be a change in taste for this item okay? for some reason people are less interested in purchasing this item let's say for instance that the uh, uh, United States Surgeon General comes out and says that coffee causes cancer and nobody should drink coffee and therefore there would probably be some kind of a decrease in demand and we would uh, see less demanded at every price uh, there could be some kind of change in expectations of the consumers okay? that would cause them to not want to purchase as much um, uh, stretching for an example let's say that uh, uh, there's uh, the weather's been extremely good and there's been a bumper crop of coffee and uh, the consumers uh, you know don't don't fear the supply of coffee so they're not likely to go out and buy a lot of extra coffee and we may see the demand for coffee uh, actually decline so there'd be less demanded at every price uh, and then finally, if there was a decrease in the price of the substitute item. And remember we said earlier that uh, it's possible that tea might be an equal substitute for coffee. And that uh, if the price of tea went really, really low, then a lot of people who were drinking coffee might switch to tea. And therefore, there would be less coffee demanded at every price. Okay. Now we're going to take a look at the flip side of the coin now we're going to look at constructing a supply curve okay. and again we're going to start off with a set of data like similar to what we did for our uh, demand curve and this time we see at nine dollars a, a pound suppliers are willing to supply eleven million pounds seven dollars nine million pounds five dollars six million pounds three dollars three million pounds and at a dollar only one million pounds of coffee are they willing to supply of course we can connect those points with our curve and we would label our curve S1 for the supply curve the first one in this analysis okay now a couple things we notice we notice that the curve uh, moves uh, to the right and upward which is the opposite of what happens with the demand curve okay? Now, we'll continue this discussion in part four. Thank you.